Orville was a serial entrepreneur our whole married life, and he would bring stuff home for me to sample all the time. And it was usually junk that I would throw into a pile and say, no, don't It had don't potential. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, and so he called me from Utah. Hey, I found this product, and he tried to describe it to me. And I wasn't getting what, what he was saying. And so I just said, well, bring it home. I'll look at it. It is something you have to experience. Um, and plugged it in, turned it on. Uh, first bar was banana nut bread. Yeah, and I came I home, and I thought she was making banana bread. And so my first reaction of it actually being used in our home was surprised that, wow, oh, this is a lot better than I thought it was. We were kicked in the teeth entrepreneurs at the time. I, I didn't think that I had the chance to keep it going. You know, I thought that I was done and I needed to go find a job somewhere. So when we found the product and she liked it, it was a surprise because most of the products she didn't like. So the fact that I came up with something or introduced something to her that she and actually loved, liked. Loved, yeah. I thought there might be some potential. But I was still trying to figure out in my mind how it was going to work, how we would be able to do it with all the debt we had, how we would be able to buy product, sell product, you know, all of the details of entrepreneurship. I was pretty nervous about privately. I told Heidi, we've got to go bankrupt. We, we're just hurting people. And we're gonna hurt more people if we don't stop this now. So let's, you know, our first losses are our least losses. I'm gonna cry. And... That was tough. So I got resolved that that was the best thing to do. And went and talked to Heidi. <laughs> and what did you say? I said, heck no, we are not gonna file bankruptcy. Because they put her name in the newspaper <laughs> and everybody would know Orville and Heidi. And I said, we're going to swing for the fence and we're going to gosh dang swing hard. Yep. They bought the company, brought it back up here. My husband and I, we helped him unload the truck. And it was just a little pickup full of stuff and we put it in the container, the huge container down there on the farm. Orville said, we gotta make it ourselves. We have to make our own bars. He experimented and he started making the bars. And I would shrink wrap them and my husband would label them. I still had to make a living. And so I went and I was selling sham wiles and car wax and you know. Junk. <laughs> things you see on late night TV. <laughs> yeah. So I had to make the product while I was doing the fairs and shows and send it to Heidi so that she could package oh, it up orders. and fulfill the orders. I think I knew that I didn't want to sell it at fairs and shows. Um, and so I just started researching and I came across the Direct Selling Association online and um, it was 18 days between the day we brought all the product home and the day that the Direct Selling Association was having their annual meeting. So it was sometime in between May 1st and May 18th that I came across this and I said, you should go to this meeting. So he, we scraped together money for him to attend and he went and came home and right. said, we're gonna do direct selling.
I went to my sister's party, which was one of the first, if not the first, Etsy party. And I fell in love with the product. The simplicity of it, the ability just to connect with the fragrances and memories. I had done direct sales before, but there was something about it that drew me to it. And so I signed up as a consultant from that party. I saw it at a Christmas show and I fell in love. I saw this beautiful warmer that I wanted and the consultant said, why don't you get it for free? And I thought that was a great idea. So she asked me to host a party. I said I would love to. My party gave me enough hostess product till June when I needed some more. And that's when I decided to sign up so I didn't have to track down the consultant to fill my orders. In the beginning, there wasn't any marketing tools or anything for us as consultants. We had a little picture book that had photos in it. With Scentsy, like I said, it was the simplicity, the just being able to set up the warmers and let people smell the fragrances. And that was a complete and utterly different way I'd ever experienced a direct sales before. We wanted to grow organically because Scentsy's a, a different company than most direct selling companies. And we grew slow and it took two or three years to see that what we were doing was actually really spectacular. Obviously, when Orville and Heidi first started the company, they didn't have any choice but to bootstrap. The initial and original consultants that we had saw what they were willing to do and what they were willing to personally sacrifice. And that created a very positive relationship between the consultants and between Orville and Heidi and the home office that I still think we benefit from today. As is often the case with Sensi, we push things to keep up with the growth. And oftentimes that growth is just a little bit outpacing our ability to, uh, to keep up with it. And that's certainly where we found ourselves in the fall of 2009. We knew looking at the upcoming sales forecast in the upcoming month to two months as we went into our heaviest selling season, that the current software we had would not be able to keep up. It literally would have brought it to its knees and the whole system was at risk of, of coming down. So we very aggressively, in, ante in anticipation of that, put together a new piece of software, and we launched it probably a month or two before it was completely baked and ready. And we had issues with it. I, I came in in the middle of it. I arrived at Sensi on November 16th of 2009, and we were in the throes of some real challenges. And our shipping department uh, were, were not getting some of the back orders on the pick tickets correctly, meaning that back order item was dropping off. There were hundreds of scathing emails about how horrible we were. And I get that because these are people that are selling our products to customers. Our shipping department and our packers and our stockers and our so sorters really took orders manually via email and they were working 24 seven basically to make sure that we still maintain the order fill rates that we needed to prior to the holiday. When we make a mistake, we apologize. We hope never to make one that big again, but the first thing we do is say, is say we're sorry because we are, we understand the position that puts our consultants in and we don't want them being in that position. You know, they say that every company has to pass a poverty test and get to success and then they have to pass the prosperity test and live through success. Um, this was our defining moment. I think the product was compelling to everybody and there was a great desire to see it succeed. And they realized that it wasn't gonna succeed without them helping us mm -hmm. because we were very open about the fact that we were in a pickle. 
And rather than fake it till we made it, we just were us. And I think that was a principle that has developed at Sensi, you know, of authenticity that started because there's really not a lot of faking when it comes to Heidi and I. We are who we are, and the fact that we are in a hole, the fact that we were on the brink of bankruptcy, we didn't hide that from anybody. And that, I think, gave people comfort to reach out and help. Well, Orville is, like I said to me, I would do anything for Orville. And I also would do anything for Heidi. I have, they're really, really good kids. And I just wanted them to have an opportunity and wanted them to be able to take care of their family. You know, I get really emotional when I talk about um, what Sensi's offered me. Oh gosh. You know, I, I would have never guessed that I would have this opportunity and I would be doing what I'm doing now. I'm a licensed hairdresser. I love who I work for. I love who I work with. We've been able to, we've been extremely fortunate to be able to put together some very talented teams here. The consultants and working with consultants and seeing how they are changing their lives with the Sensi opportunity and what it has done for them um, is inspiring every single day. Watching consultants that were state, that were stay-at-home moms with very little education that now have these amazing teams and downlines and are these leaders. And it's about watching people within my own team that didn't think they had it in them to be the leaders that they are and feel pushed every day, but come in and do it and watching them grow and develop into people that they never thought they could be. That's the Sensi story to me. That's the magic in what we're doing. It's really helping people become better than they thought they could be without this.